Okay, welcome back. This is our um, lecture for 7.3. Um, so today what I really need you to do is make sure that you do this quiz, 7.1 slash 7.4 quiz. Um, it's posted on Connect, on sorry, on Canvas if you um, didn't pick it up from me in person. And, um, and also make sure that you also download the T-table, which I sent out to you guys um, and posted on Canvas as well, because you're going to need that for this part. So do the quiz. If you haven't done the quiz, do it now. And don't take more than 10 minutes, though, and just do as much as you can in 10 minutes and try to refresh yourselves with that, and then we'll kind of get going on this. Okay, so go ahead and pause now and do the quiz. All right, so... Welcome back from the quiz. We'll go ahead and take a look. Um, so today we are going to also look at 7.3, uh, confidence intervals for the means. And um, and then we're also going to um, look at what you guys have to do. So you have do Tuesday, the, the Tuesday we get back, we ha you have Connect Math 7174 due. So maybe start on that sooner. You know, maybe start in on that this week if you can. Um, because it'll be due the Tuesday after you get back. And also, um, someone had mentioned they had some issues with this. Make sure that when you when you use the um, the uh, critical values that you actually use use two point. Oops, this is not as clean as mine is. Use two point five eight um, instead of two point. 575 five for those um, critical values. So, in other words, round those to the round it to, to two decimal places because uh, it seems like that's what Connect Math uses. So you'll, you're going to want to do that. Um, and then also uh, on April 2nd, you'll have Connect Math 7.3 due, which you should be able to do after today. Great. And then the Project Part 5, we're going to put that off. That'll be due on April 14th. Let's go ahead and take a look at where we are here. So just a quick reminder, the sample proportion p hat, in other words, th that's the, that's the um, answer we get from, from our sample, the sample proportion, whatever. You take a survey, and remember, proportions are yes, no questions, right? And yes, no answers like, is it blue or not blue? You know, did you vote for Trump or did you not vote for Trump? Um, I don't know. Are you a student or are you not a student? Things like that. So the proportion, sample proportion p hat is the proportion of yeses, the percent of yeses you got um, from your sample. So sample proportion is p hat. We're trying to guess what the population proportion is, what the whole population will be. So we'll take a sample, and then from that we're going to guess what everybody would say instead of asking everybody because that's just too expensive. Um, and that's, you know, this, the population proportion, our parameter is p naught or sometimes we just call it P. So um, P hat, our sample proportion, that's a statistic, right? You guys remember this one? This is a statistic, right? Because it's for our, from our sample. Statistic, P hat. And then our parameter, is p naught. So um, that's our population proportion. They're both proportions, but one is proportion from our sample, and one is proportion from our, of, of the whole population that we don't know. Okay, and then just a quick reminder, our best guess, our best point estimate of what the whole population would be is whatever we got from our sample. If you take a sample and, you know, 53% of them like hamburgers, then your best guess of the percentage of all people in the United States who like hamburgers is 53%. So that's what we call a point estimate. Let me go. I should underline that also. Point estimate. That's your best guess at what the whole population would be. All right. So let's go and take a look at your problem 1A on your quiz. So we'll take a look at that. Um, and nutrition found in a random sample of 80, of 80, sample of 80, that's your N, 
right? Sample of, that's where you find your N. 25% indicated they ate fruit at least three times a week. 25% is what you got from your sample. That's so horrible. Let's try that again. 25% is the proportion of people who said yes. So that's your P hat. Um, does it eat fruit at least three times a week? So at least three, what's that? That's nothing. That's just the question that's your qualifier. That's what you ask people as part of your question to say yes or no. So it's really, it's not N, it's not P, it's hat, it's not P, it's not anything. It's just, it's just the question, right? It's the qualifier. Um, all right, so then what's the best point estimate of the true pro proportion of families who said they ate fruit at least three times a week? Your best guess of what P naught is? Your best guess is P hat. 25%. Okay, good. So take a look at the next thing. Now we're going to talk about confidence intervals. So again, remember you have your best guess, your best point estimate. That's your P hat. And then you're going to take an interval around that. You're going to say, oh, let me go um, a certain amount this way, a certain number of standard deviations this way, and a certain number of standard deviations that way, um, so that I end up with a kind of a lower limit, an upper limit guess at what it might be. Because what's populated is exactly 25%? Not great. But if I kind of take this little interval around and go from, it's kind of a horrible line, but it's okay, but go from here to here, then I have a much better chance of getting you know, of the getting the the true percentage. If I kind of give myself a little bit of error this way, a little bit of error that way, and this is what we call we're going to add our error, and here we're going to subtract it, whatever our error is. And remember, our error is a certain number of standard deviations. What is it? It's going to be well, we take our p hat, our statistic. That's this part here, and then we're going to. Um, add and subtract our error. This is our error. This is our p hat. And, sorry, that's not quite right. Um, our e, which is our critical value, which is the number of standard deviations we want to go, multiplied by times what a standard deviation is. So this is the number of standard deviations multiplied by a standard deviation. That's our error. Critical value tells you how many standard deviations you want to go, right, within two standard deviations, within three standard deviations. Here we're going to be a little more fine. We might say within 1.96 standard deviations or within 2.58 standard deviations. And then multiply it by whatever standard deviation is, which tells you how far you want to go in, you know, in real amounts, in, in ounces or in pounds or in inches that you want to go, you know, what your error is in, in actual numbers. In this case, it'll be in percentages. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. An interval estimate or confidence interval of a parameter is an interval or a range of values used to estimate the true value of the parameter p naught or mu. This estimate may or may not contain the value of the parameter being estimated, right? So we're we're guessing at what our true proportion is going to be. Most of the time, we'll make a good enough guess, and it will actually contain the true, the true parameter, the, the true proportion of the whole population. But remember, it's a sample. So it's entirely possible that you get a messed up sample without realizing it. Right? So most of the time, you're going to get samples in you know, here, all these red dots. Remember, those represent samples. And most of the time, if you take your interval, around the sample, right, to the right and the left, you're going to include it. But every once in a while, you're just going to randomly, without even realizing it, you're going to get a weird sample, right? And this is just, you get a strange sample, you take your interval around it, and it doesn't contain what the true proportion is because you have taken an odd sample without realizing it. So 95% of the time, you're going to have a normal sample. But 5% of the time, you know, we did that before. Remember, we did where everybody um, on, on the computers in class, you all flipped a coin a hundred times, and um, a couple of you had 59 or more heads. You got an unusual result. You didn't know that, right? And, and you'd be that 5% that would go out and write a paper saying, oh, you know, it's 
percentage has, has a difference. So that's this is that five percent of unusual time, and people just don't they don't know they've taken they've taken a sample. They don't know it's unusual or not. You have no idea. Okay. Um, next, we're going to talk about critical values. Just to remind you guys, it is um, it's how many standard deviations you want to go. So your critical value tells you how many standard deviations you want to go, you know, in this way and in this way. So it kind of tells you how many you want to go. Maybe this might be 1.96, right? Not quite two. Um, that's what you call your critical value. It's a z-score, right? Z-score says how many standard deviations away do you want to go? Um, but and so your book will call it z of alpha over two. Remember, alpha over two is just a label. It doesn't mean take z and multiply by alpha and divide by two. Don't do that. It's just this alpha over two is just a label. The book will call it that, z of alpha over two. I'm just going to call it critical value, CV, and all the tests um, and on all of our quizzes and our in-class in notes and stuff like that because it's a lot easier to wrap your head around that. I think students, um, one of my students, a couple last year, um, he took me in the fall and then retook me in the spring, and he said that um, what was a lot clearer and made things a lot easier because my scores jumped up in the spring, and he said that using critical value instead of Z alpha over 2 made a big difference because it was just less confusing. So we're going to go ahead and go with critical values instead. So um, let's go ahead and move on. Um, for proportions, you don't need to know, you don't need to look them up. Here they are, critical values. But instead, I'm going to say, let's go ahead for your homeworks and use 1.65. And for this one, use 2.58. So go ahead and change your sheet, change your actual notes if you have it, so that you're more consistent with this and then you won't screw up on the homework. So it'll make things a lot easier for you. So um, the nice thing is, if you want a 90% confidence interval, remember, confidence interval is what's inside, right? What's the, the inside, inside here. So if this is 90%, then on the outside, these red parts, if you add those together, that's the rest of it. That's 10%. That's our alpha. So you'll notice that half the alpha is over here. Alpha is divided by 2. 5% is over here. The other half of the alpha is over here. The other 5%. The alpha is going to be 10%. And your critical value would be 1.65 because that means it's the z-score where, in this case, where half the alpha is here. That's this z-score here. So it would be... Um, you know, this would be the negative of it, and this would be the positive of it. So this, if this was 0 0.5, 0 0.05, then this would be negative 1 point, uh, 1.65, and then this would be positive 1.65. I don't want to. I don't want to screw. I don't want to overwrite that. I'll try to squeeze that in. Um, so just kind of give you kind of a sense of where this all fits in. And that is kind of a really bad look. So I can try to fix that. It's a very large eraser. There we go. Good. Okay. So again, for proportions, you just use this table. The critical values are all right there. It's really easy. Just look them up. Um, and then we have our margin of error. So again, remember the margin of error is how far you want to go in either direction. Right? Here's your p hat. Your error is how far you jump this way and how far you jump that way to get to your upper and your lower um, limits. And what it is is a certain number of standard deviations. So what is it? Critical value it tells me how many standard deviations to go. This is our number of standard deviations. I don't like this color. I'm going to switch to different color. And how many, so how many standard deviations we go and what a standard deviation is. So this is what a standard deviation is for a proportion. Um, so that's your error. Right, how many standard deviations you're going to go, multiplied by what standard deviation is, that tells you how far you're going to actually go. 
right? So just to make sure you guys are clear on this, um, for example, you know, I'll do it with means because it's easier to wrap our heads around. So say um, people have an average of, uh, I don't know, um, you know, say they're an average of 62 inches. And say um, we want to take a confidence interval with that, or, or try to guess what the average result is. So we, we take a sample of, you know, 30, 40 people, and we get an average of 62 inches. Um, and then we want to guess it was what the true average height is of people. So we want we want to go 1.96 standard deviations and say, or we had we had a mean of 62 inches, and say the actual standard deviation was um, I don't know three inches. Say, so we're going to go. We want to go. We want to go, say, 95% confidence interval, 1.96 standard deviations for a critical value. Then we would go, how many would we go? We'd go 1.96 standard deviations. How much is standard deviation? Three inches. So we would go three times 1.96. So about, what is it, three times 1.96. So 5.488 inches this way. Right, so we'd add 5.88 inches, and we'd subtract 5.88 inches, and that's how we get to our upper or lower limits. So this just puts it, you know, this error being your critical value times your standard deviation just tells you how much in inches you're going to go. Right, this says how many standard deviations and what standard deviation is. You multiply those two things to tell you how far in each direction you should actually go. So it's not that complicated. Don't make it more complicated than it is. Don't overthink it. It's, it's very straightforward. Chapter 7 is super straightforward. Just don't, don't think it's harder than it is. Um, the hard part is when you start getting into um, Chapter 8 and you have two different things to think about. So again, margin of error. B, it's how much you want to go in each direction. And um, I'd love to show you maybe when I, when we have, you know, next, next class, when we're actually on camera and everything else, I'll kind of show you guys, you know, kind of, you know, my whole thing about the fair guy. If you think about a guy who's at the fair, what he does is, um, you know, he kind of says, well, I'll try to tell you, I'll, try, I'll give it a shot. Um, he kind of says, you know, I'll guess your weight within, or your age. I'll guess your age within three years, right? So if he guesses, he's going to guess your weight within three years, right? Guess weight. And he guesses 30. What does he actually get to win? What, what's, what's his range that he gets? He guesses 30. Within three, that's his error. Within is his error. His error is three years. He gets three years this way, 27 minus three. And he gets three years this way, plus three, to so 33. So that is his error. That's the error that he gets. That's his margin of error. So the within, that's your margin of error. It's plus and minus, minus, plus whatever your error is to get your the numbers here. Okay, so that's kind of, you know, kind of the way to kind of wrap around that you can kind of think of. So again, margin of error, that's the amount of error that you're allowed to get, and that's going to be, um, you know, plus or minus, right? How, much, how many standard deviations you go to the right, how many go to the left, standard number of standard deviations multiplied by what a standard deviation is. Um, how do you write it? Um, oh, sorry, that's your error. And then... The confidence interval itself, again, is, remember, it's your p-hat minus the error and your p-hat plus the error. We're saying that the actual population proportion, you know, the, the, the proportion of everybody is between these two. So it's less than this, it's greater than that. Um, but this right here, this is your lower limit. Let me make that darker. 
This is your lower limit. This is your upper limit. And we're saying that P hat is between those two. We're saying, sorry, P hat, P naught is between these two. The, tr the population proportion is between your lower limit and your upper limit. That's the range that we think that the actual population proportion is going to be because we don't know the population proportion. We know P hat, we found that. The sample, we took a sample and we found that. We're make, we, and the reason why we did, it, did that is to guess at what the population is. And we're saying the population is between these two. Where again, our error is our number of standard deviations, our critical value, multiply it by what a standard deviation is. Square root of P hat, Q hat over N. All right, another way of writing it um, is, and again, don't write it this way. You can kind of start off this way, but really, this is the other acceptable way of writing it, is using interval notation where you find what p hat minus e is, and you find p hat plus e is your upper limit and your lower limit, and you do that with parentheses. So your lower limit, comma, your upper limit in parentheses with a comma in between them. That's the other way of writing it. So your problem 1B on the quiz was to find the confidence interval um, of the true proportion of families who say they, each, they eat fruit at least three times a week. So um, we said that our, this is our N, right? And we said that this is our P hat, which means that our Q hat must be, if this is 25%, our Q hat must be 75%, 0.75. Um, and we want to know the 99% confidence interval. So this tells us that our critical level is 99%, which means our critical value is 2.58. We're just going to switch to that so you guys get used to that for the homework, um, which means that next we find our error. I don't like that color. I'm going to switch to this color. Error is equal to um, our critical value times square root of p hat q hat over n, so that's going to be 2.58 times square root of 0.25 times 0.75 divided by 80. And again, find your inside out. Look at the, find your inside first and work your way outwards. So let me go ahead and try to grab my calculator here. 0.25, whoops, clear, 0.25 times 0.75 divided by 80, and we get 0 0.02, 0 0.00234, that number, um, and then we want to raise that to the one half power, which I don't know that I can do that here. Yeah, totally not. Okay, so let me get my calculator from my phone out. Two three point oh oh two three point oh oh two. Four. Uh, place the one half power, and that's 0 0.04. Let me go ahead and write this in. So that's equal to 2.58 times the square root of 0 0.00234. Um, four, four. And, and then I'm going to find that which ends up being 2.58 times 0.0484. So we end up getting 0.1249. So it runs to 125. Okay, great. So that's my error. Still not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is going to be my um, 
my confidence interval. So I need to find my lower limit and my upper limit. So my, low, my lower limit will be my p hat minus my error, which is 0.25 minus 0.125, which is 0.125. And then my upper limit will be my p hat plus e, which is 0.25 plus 0.125 or point, oops, 0.375. So that means that my confidence interval is going to be my lower limit, p is greater than that, and p is less than my upper limit, 0.375. Or you can do it in interval notation, parentheses, 0.125, comma, 0.375. So make sure if you do use this notation, you do not put p hat here. This is p naught or just regular p. Okay, and then, um, Problem 1C on the quiz. Take a quick look at that one. So here, um, would a proportion of families equal to 28% be considered large or unusual? No, it's totally inside. It's within our confidence interval. Right? Cause our confidence interval was 0.125 to point to point 0.375. Within. Okay, good. So totally not unusual at all. Um, and then we also talked about alternative ways to find p hat. Um, remember, you can also just um, sometimes we don't usually we'll give it to you. We'll just say this percentage, right? Um, but sometimes we don't. Sometimes we'll say three out of five dentists, you know, recommend Crest or whatever. Um, or in a survey of 420 people, 276 said yes. You know, you did whatever it was. So that's a proportion in disguise. So again, it's your number of successes, your number of yeses out of your total. So that's your p hat, um, and then your q hat is just one minus the p hat. And you just kind of look, you have to read it and kind of read through and figure out. You know, are they giving me a number of people, number of successes, or are they giving me a percentage? And you just have to kind of read it and, and sort that out. Um, so we'll go ahead and take a look. Uh, actually, we won't. Um, we we've had we had one of those problems last time, and we'll have more again next time, I think. Um, so let's take a look at the other thing we talked about, which was your point, find the point estimate and your error from a confidence interval. So if you have a confidence interval already, then you can figure out like so. Here's a confidence interval point. We had, oops, our last one was point one two five, comma point three seven five. We can totally find our p hat because so our p hat is smack dab in the middle of these two. So all I gotta do is find these two and average them, right? Add them up, divide by two, and that's our p hat. Um, the other thing we know is that the distance from from one to the other one, from here to our p hat to here, that's two e. It's two e from here to here. It's an e plus another e. So our error would be. To, twice of our error would be the distance from here to here. So if we find the distance from our upper limit to our lower limit, in other words, our upper limit minus our lower li limit, and divide by two, we'll get our e, because this distance is, is twice the error. So we'd have to divide that and have to get one e. And you had that as a quiz. All right, so here's yours. It was um, p hat is between these two, or sorry, p naught is between these two, find p hat and find E. So again, P hat is going to be the average of them. You can do it either way. I'm going to put it to decimals because that's just how I like it. But you can leave it as percentages and it will be totally exactly the same. No big deal. Why is this being lazy like this? It's just dropping. And you end up getting uh, point 0.5, hmm, um, oh, I don't know, let's figure that out. Point 0.566 plus point four five four. Five one. 
Um, okay, great. So that would be your p hat. And then you can also find your error. You can either, you can just, if you can, you can just do, you know, if I'm matching up from right to here, I'm just going to use the fact that from, from my p hat to here is 1e, so 0 0.566 minus 0 0.51 would give me 0 0.056. So that would be my error. Or you could have done the thing where you subtract these two and divide by two. Either way, you get the same, get the same answer. If you've done 51% or 5.6%, then that's the same exact thing. You could just put, I'll put this one, equals 5.6%, as long as you have the percent symbol in there. And this also would be 51%. Okay. Um, and then the, the very last thing we did last class was determining the sample size. Um, so sometimes we want to know we want to know how big a sample size to take in order to get something within a certain error. So if you want to have it within 2% or within 3%, if you want to know your error within a certain amount, like that one guy said, I'll guess your age within three years. If you want to make sure your error is fixed, you want to make sure it's not more than 2% or not more than 3% or not more than 1.5%, then you can fix that error. Um, so that means that you're going to have to move this to make that to make that error what you want it to be because the critical value you can't change your p hat q hat you can't change that you can't force people to say yes or say no to make to manipulate the p hat if they say what they say all right in order to have a good data the n is the only thing that you can change so um, here we saw for n in other words we're going to multiply we're going to square both sides if you want I can go ahead and do that quickly for you I squared both sides. I'd get that and that, and then this square root part would just go away. And then I would multiply both sides by n. So then I'd end up with these guys canceling out. And then I'm going to divide both sides by e squared. Over e squared. Then these guys would cancel out. They'd come in another form of one. And I get n equals critical value squared times p hat q hat over e squared. And also remember that your book sometimes writes it like this, which is totally fine. Critical value over e squared times p hat q hat. And you can use either one of those. Those are both good. doesn't matter. They work out. They're exactly the same. Either way you have it critical value squared on top and an e squared on the bottom, either way. So as you like it, go ahead and use it. Um, and then remember that if you, if, you, if you have an estimate of p hat, then you would use that top one. If you don't know what p hat, if you have no estimate to use for p hat, then use the worst case scenario, 50-50, right? So 0.5 for p and 0.5 for q. So if you have 0.5 for p and q up here, then you'd have 0.5 times 0.5, which is 0.25. So you can either plug in 0.25 there or just you know, use those and you get the same thing. Um, so that's when you don't know what to use for p hat. You don't have an estimate. Otherwise, you just use the estimate for p hat in here. All right, Randolph rule. Um, remember, you have to round. Why? Because you can't sample a, par a part of a person. You have to sample a whole person. So if you sample a whole person, um, you have to round it, and this is the minimum amount you need. So 237 is not enough. You have to have at least 237.164. So you can spell that very well. So you really need 238 because this is the minimum you need to have. It's the minimum sample size to get within your error. Um, and I did do an, I did, we already did this example, so I'm not going to do it again. We'll go ahead and take a break here. Um, so um, take a few, little short break and go ahead and, um, you know, walk around for a couple minutes and relax a bit. And then we'll resume in just another minute.